Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Open Mic at CFMU. Um, my name's Olivia, and I'm music director here, and I'm in the studio with two of our music department members. <laughs> um, I'm Jamie. I'm a second year pure mathematics student. Yep. Hello, I'm Jillian, and I'm a second year sociology student. Awesome. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about... Um, three albums um, in the realm of expressive indie. That is the uh, theme we're going with this um, episode. And yeah, I'm really excited. So um, yeah, we're going to start with an album by Grant Perez titled Conversations with the Moon. Then um, I'll shift over to a little bit more electronic with We Switched Bodies. And then finish off with Hamilton's very own newest al album release, uh, by Basement Revolver, titled Embody. And yeah, I think it's going to be a fun time. So let's start off with um, Conversations with the Moon. Jillian, do you want to give a little bit of an introduction? For sure. So to get to know the artist, Conversations with the Moon by Grant Perez, is he, he is a Filipino-Australian independent musician. He first released his EP, Conversations with the Moon, and he's at the age 20. And he started his music journey on YouTube actually in 2013 as he gained more subscribers when he was a freshman in college he had to make the decision whether or not if he should pursue music or continue with his degree and where we are today is he decided to pursue his music career as we we're talking about his EP today and so at one his track my heart beats for you is he actually did a little collaboration with his fans on Twitch so he began one of the first verses, and then everyone was commenting, like suggestions that he, what he should put the next verse to be in. And if you look at the lyrics, when it says "and when the sun sleeps at night," that was the fans contribute. Oh, um, how they like really wild. brought in. I really liked that um, that song. I felt like "My Heart Beats for You" and Clementine had a softer, like Montreal indie pop vibe it kind of reminded me of like men i trust because there was some like synth keyboard in there and um i think it really contrasted with cherry wine and conversations with the moon which like um were really led by his voice and i feel like the instrumental um in those two songs is really just like accompanying his voice his voice is very flowy and then you have like the classical guitar um and kind of like a rhythm that's similar to bossa nova jazz which i thought was really interesting given that it's like um, a kind of newer release album and we don't see a lot of like classical jazz guitar in like modern indie um, yeah and I really liked Cherry Wine that was my favorite song and honestly I would listen to this album um, on a day where I like wanted to relax or kind of like to romanticize my day I think that he wrote it um, with like he's very emotional in this like this album is very emotional he, I know he like referenced a lot of the songs to be like um, written from certain situations like I think the second song Conversations with the Moon was written to like his current girlfriend like when he was asking her out I read that somewhere yeah um it's definitely like really neat because like looking at some interviews he did in Australia because like that's where he's based he records some of his music in his room where he grew up in and and so, like, you can kind of feel it through his music that it's just gives, like, a home kind of, like, yeah. feeling. A sincerity, so, yeah. yeah. It has that kind of, like, comforting, like, bedroom pop feeling where it just kind yeah. of feels like you're, like, with him. It feels very personable and, like, yeah, comforting. Oh, oh definitely. Like, you're in a coming-of-age movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I really like the track, like, Absence of You because, um... It was it was kind of about like getting over like a breakup and kind of looking back in retrospect and this song and a lot of the songs if you like listen to them it almost sounds like they were like written for you it's easy to like listen to them and really feel yeah, it and it feels very like individualistic like authentic too yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. i really like what he said about cherry wine and this is why i think it's one of my favorite songs because when i hear it i kind of want to dance like it's just like yeah. it makes me just feel like light and like not thinking about it too hard like I know some like music like the lyricism is like it makes you think and it's like really intense and this was more like light and like 
honest and he said that cherry wine is about being a little playful on your night out trying to court someone you like by showing your skills on the dance floor and dancing the night away and even if things don't go your way at least you had a good time which i think encompasses the song pretty well yeah that's really cute i really like that (laughs) yeah um like okay this album reminded me a lot of the sound of like adele's first album she released this one when she was like 19 so like nobody it's like the least popular i think out of all of her albums which are like very successful and popular but um she had this kind of like early r&b like um soft jazz like um acoustic sound which this album kind of really reminds me of um and also uh for people who like melody gardo i thought that you would definitely like grant perez as well he really reminds me of like Jacob Collier, who also got his start on YouTube and like oh. kind of started with like soft bedroom pop and he uses like classical guitar too. But it's um, just kind of similar how it's almost like simplistic but complex at the same time. Like there's not too much going on, but your focus can be put in different places. There's really just like the classical guitar and the lyrics are the two main focuses. And it's like jazzy but still poppy and like plain, but <laughs> not too plain that it's boring. Yeah. Yeah, it really all goes together yeah it's like he was able to find that perfect balance because it's it's definitely not easy to you know you never want to put too much or too little because then that could make things fall apart in the song but he just was able to find that balance and i really like how he was consistent with that throughout the songs Mm because like like each song had that certain vibe even though there's like different messages either like like confessing to a partner or going through a breakup it's like they all had this like certain feeling of like comfort in a in a way Mm -hmm. he just like had that effect in his music i think the opposite effect may be found in the next album um by we switch bodies which was like inconsistent but inconsistent in like a really exciting way if that makes sense i'm gonna read a little bit about the artist background um and this was um written by willow who is also one of our music department members um she recommended this album um and honestly i really i thought it was really cool just hearing about this this group laundry day um so they're an american pop rock band from new york and it consists of two vocalists uh sawyer and jude a guitarist named henry and a drummer named itai and a bassist named henry as well So they're all classmates in high school and they're early graduates. So they formed in 2018 um, and they've released four albums since their formation in 2018 and played many sold out shows as well as toured with um, Brockhampton's uh, Kevin. And um, yeah, well, Brockhampton, that's pretty big. (laughs) And um, They said that this record acts as a memento of the current transition in the quintet's personal and creative lives as they graduate high school and move on to bigger and better things. So very young, successful um, band members here, um, given their age and their accomplishments. And uh, the genres for this album were as difficult for me to like characterize. Um, but I want to say like electronic pop or indie pop rock and shoegaze. What do you guys think? Yeah, I would just say like indie pop rock probably <laughs> the it, biggest it kind of yeah the old yeah all over. it's a lot <laughs> happening yeah definitely even though like there's like di- like a lot of different things going on in the album they do it so well though that's like yeah. what i find like what really captures the album and definitely shows like off their talent because it's because not anyone either an artist or really like depending what creative process you're in it's like doing something completely different each time could be really difficult but they're just able to capture it in each song they made i found like, yeah yeah and you mentioned um brockhampton kevin abstract of brockhampton actually recorded it with them so he was in the studio oh and he had wow some writing credits and stuff okay and it was produced by brendan o'brien which is kind of bizarre he like did like pearl like Jam. pearl yeah and, like, <laughs> like classic like, rock guy. it really does not fit like what you would expect this album to be mm-hmm. it, would, it would be produced by so it's really interesting that she brings up like how many different influences there are in the song or in the album because certain songs kind of touch on like mid-2000s pop cheesy kind of like yeah tropes. like some of the like songs are written very like classically like verse chorus first chorus yeah. and like 
Um, and the vocals, like it's centered around the vocals. Like I would say like this, okay, yeah, this reminds me of like a pop song that came out in like, I don't know, 2007. But then yeah. you have other tracks which are just like, not like um traditional like traditionally written and like don't follow like any sort of um like order yeah, yeah. to be kind of honest i found that some songs like suffered for that reason they almost felt like patchwork where like yeah it didn't flow super nice and they were trying to hit all the bases in like one song often there would be like echoey vocals which i think was trying to be like a psych type effect but it just kind of came off as like out of place in the songs but overall, like, it did a really good job bringing all these different genres together to make this, like, yeah. just fun album. I completely agree that some of the some of the songs, like, felt, like, out of place a little bit. But I think they, that they have, like, a couple, like, really strong songs. Like, my favorite one was Little Bird, which is very, like, fast-paced, energetic. And, like, I noticed because at the beginning, the song, like, builds up with, like, all of the band members kind of, like, not yelling, but, like... I don't know, vocalizing. S- vocalizing in like a very harsh tone in unison, which um, was like just kind of startling, but also like definitely caught my attention. Yeah. There are a lot of sounds going on, like there's an organ, a lot of electronic sounds that I can't really like um, say is like a certain instrument, but it's a, it's a sound. It's um, and I thought that was cool. Uh, there's a very interesting bridge in this song where it just kind of pauses and then like a fantastic bass line like drives this bridge forward. And um, yeah, the song overall just like really fast paced and just like fun to listen to, I thought. Um, and then I also liked Worry About Yourself, which is very like electronic and yeah. dancey. Uh, they switched genres with each song though on the album, I want to say. So um, with Worry About Yourself, it was more like acoustic and soft song. So it felt like kind of a more traditional like indie acoustic song um and uh yeah then there was don't blow yourself up which i also liked um that was more emotional um but they had a violin which was an interesting addition like listening to the songs i don't know if this is like it was just me though but it kind of reminded me of 21 pilots almost kind of like a nostalgic kind of way because i think because what really stood out to me were the songs Don't Blow Yourself Up and Worry About Yourself. I don't know if maybe it was just those songs in particular, but it kind of reminded me of their, like, earlier releases, too. Kind of like like Blurry Face by 21 Pilots. I like that. And, like, <laughs> and their most, like, recent one, Shy Away. I don't know, like, something about it just kind of reminded me of their style. But I think of just those songs in particular, because they do... Yeah. Do like a couple of like different genres in a sense of one in one album. I think they're really good with like integrating the electronic aspects into it, like subtly. Sometimes it, there it's prominent, but it doesn't seem out of place because of how it's always kind of present, which is kind of like early Twenty One Pilots that they have little bits of like electronica <laughs> sprinkled in there. Um, but yeah, this album like every song stands out, and that's definitely like a strong point. And some of them are more electronic versus others, but like you were saying, they're all kind of different genres and. Yeah. I guess with 21 Pilots too, they do talk a lot about just like the, not trauma, but like the difficulties of like growing up in kind of a coming yeah. of age way. And I felt a lot of these songs touched on the topics like growing up and like coping with like um, mental health. And like, um, I think one of the songs was about purely like, or, oh yeah, knots or the knots was about like recognizing the habits that we form that keep us like enclosed from like other people and like not able to like open yourself up so i thought that that was interesting and i could definitely resonate with that one (laughs) so i do find that like this album was also very like self-expressive but just in a completely like in a contrasting way to like grant perez's which was um more like melodic this was sort of um like i don't know I would say, like, this is really, like, intimate. Yeah. This one is way more, like, outgoing and, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, bold. Yeah. Yeah. Like, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's um, move on to the next one. So this is our final album that we're we're going to be talking about today. Um, And it's Hamilton's very own Basement Revolver, which released their second full-length album, uh, Embody, last week. This is very exciting. Um for Hamilton. So the album's been getting a lot of um, 
credit lately, and they have their um, album release party happening on March 19th at the Garrison, or, yeah, at the Garrison, but that's in Toronto, unfortunately, not in Hamilton, but if you're in Toronto or want to check out to Toronto, that is happening, and it's very exciting. Um, so they are... Um, they started out as an indie dream gaze band um, and they were signed by a UK label first um, in 2016 and the label was named Fear of Missing Out. I had not heard of this label before, but um, they seem to be pretty popular. Um, they were later signed on by Hamilton's very own Sonic Onion um, and so they released a single to start off titled Johnny Part 2 in 2016 and then a EP in 2017 titled Agatha followed by two more EPs in 2019 titled Wax and Digital and Heavy Eyes and then they went on a tour in all of southern Ontario and in the UK and in Germany surprisingly which is cool I, I mean I imagine touring in Germany was just awesome um and yeah, so they're co-led by um, Nimal Agalawate and Chrissy Hearn Morrison. Um, and the band's first ever gig was in Hamilton um, at the 2016 Supergirl show, which is very cool. And they said that they wrote Embody to accompany the global trauma of 2020 and that the album was um, aimed to demonstrate the their artists um authenticity and kind of in a method to like take what's personal to them like their personal um ideas and like struggles and kind of um show them outwardly to the public um because they felt like it was important to like express their like political views and their like personal struggles um with the rest of the world in order to like um embrace their their voices and that's what they um, did with embody it's supposed to be an embodiment of their um true like personas if that makes sense uh so i thought that was really interesting um uh what about you guys <laughs> Oh, so. No, you go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. It's like what really stood out to me was definitely the lyrics. Like, for example, the song Skin. Because, like, the lyrics, I want to feel at home in my skin. It just, like, it just, like, really struck to me. Yeah. And especially, like, since the album's theme is about, you know, like, mental health and, like, as, like, the world has, like, gone through for, like, 2020, I feel like definitely, like, the topic of body image, it's... Because, you know, in, like, magazines and, like, online, you see a lot of stuff that puts pressure on how, like, a person is supposed to look, in a way. And that since we're, like, at home all the time, and it's, like, the only way we could interact was being online. And I feel like that's definitely one of the things that contributed to be able to feel more insecure. Because cause everyone was just online, and so... You get more of these ads of, mm -hmm. you know, of like unrealistic goals to achieve. And that song really like grasp on like. like it, yeah, I agree. It is really like, I mean, like, I think the pandemic definitely heightened a lot of people's like insecurities just by like being so isolated. You tend to like focus more like um inside you instead of like what's going on like outside of you um and that can like lead to a lot of spiraling which i know something definitely many of us have, i can resonate with that for sure um and yeah i i liked how she was she opened up a lot about her like um chrissy opened up a lot about her struggles with her bulimia diagnosis um in skin as well as in circles um, I know in circles she said don't feel safer without many layers of clothes covering up the things that I'm not meant to show and I think it's really it must be really difficult to like translate like these struggles into like lyrics um, and like because writing I imagine is already like emotional and draining and this just like seems like a whole other layer of like <laughs> recognizing oneself and like putting it into like musical format but um that's honestly i was very impressed and um with skin they released a music video for this like a couple months leading up to the album release and it's really um like just the cinematography is stunning um and it's centered on the co-lead chrissy and just um yeah it was really beautiful and 
just kind of set in like a f- like a field with like flowers and I don't know I liked it a lot <laughs> yeah. I liked it too and like with the lyrics it's almost confronting listening to it because it's relatable but not so many people will just be as like unmediated and direct with it yeah you just outright say it is it's almost like a lot of the songs like especially the closing track long way kind of talk about how you're supposed to feel shame or guilt about how you feel about things and like how you're supposed to feel bad about changing and you're supposed to keep it all inside and I like how it's just being kind of shared openly because a lot of people do relate to it and a lot of people don't speak up about it so as hard as it would have been to like share it and put it out there a lot of people don't make that step so it's really respectable and like admirable that yeah. this album is so open and honest about everything she is like yeah they are like so honest like I, I know in slow as well like she talks about um how she like feels meeting like becoming intimate with like another person and opening herself up to like another individual when it's like so difficult to be like um letting someone in to something that you've been struggling with that you can like barely explain yourself and i thought that that was really important too um yeah and like on top of the lyrics, it's also, like, a beautiful album. Like, the sound. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it reminds me of, like, the 80s, like, dream pop type of thing. But the production is amazing, and it's so nice to listen to. And although most of it has, like, a more kind of mellow and, like, intimate feel to it, there's a few songs that have, like, a really good drive to them that give it enough variety so that it flows nice, but you're not, like, the songs don't get muddied together. Mm-hmm. They're all really distinct and, like, can stand alone really strongly on on their own yeah like when exp- exp- i think exclaim was like they just they're described as noisy dream pop mm. um or like dream gaze and i was like noisy dream gaze and then i heard circles which is like she chrissy has such like a soft sounding like um mellow voice and then it's like played over this like um fusion of like like classical guitar like not classical guitar classic rock guitar and like a kind of sonic like vibrating like electric guitar like together and it re- really reminded me of like the cranberries from the 90s because yeah. i know they have like yeah like or Aurora- Aurora- is the lead yeah and her voice is like so like nice and high and like soft and like really like unique but it's supported by like this like hard alternative rock sound and i think that this band's really cool because like her voice doesn't take all of the like attention like the band isn't there to accompany her they're like equals yeah 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 definitely and like the way they're described as like like dream pop or rock it's i think the word like dream just is really important because like listening to their songs in general like her voice sounds almost i want to say hypnotic it's just like you get like drawn in just like the way she presents the lyrics and how it accompanies so well with the instruments it's just like it pulls you in it's like you want to hear yeah. more. Definitely get lost. <laughs> I feel like that aspect, like mixed with um, the lyrical content, is listening to it. It sounds like it's written like for you. Like it's hard to listen to it and feel disconnected from it because it's so. The lyrics are almost like confronting at times, and the music is so like entrancing that you listen to it and it feels just like your own thoughts. If that's like yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Yeah, I really, I really liked it. I. Um, I'm actually excited. I'm going to see them <laughs> in Toronto. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess um, that's it for the those three albums. So definitely, um, if you're tuning in, check them out. Check out all of those songs. We'll be playing them on air um, over the course of the week. But um, yeah, do you guys want to say anything to conclude? <laughs> uh, well, thank you everyone for listening. And I yeah. hope you enjoy these albums and definitely check them out. Like. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening, guys, and uh, tune in to uh, the rest of CFMU today. Uh, And once again, this was um, Open Mic, episode number two.